Last class, we talked about some undecidable problems or languages, undecidable functions. So one example was this acceptance language or this acceptance function. The way that this behaved was he said, if I gave you some Turing machine and a potential input string, we want to answer this question, does that Turing machine accept that input string? So this is the acceptance problem or the acceptance function or the acceptance language. These are all sort of similar ways to talk about the same thing. What I'm going to talk about right now is this language ATM, so this acceptance language, which is the set of all machine input pairs, machine description input pairs, so all strings where that's a description of a machine and an input for that machine such that that machine, when running on that input, will accept or uh, return one. So we'd mentioned this last time, and the way that we sort of proved that this was not going to be a computable language was we constructed this tricky contradiction, where we said, if we had a Turing machine that did accept this language, or that did properly compute this language, then we would end up with this paradox. Basically, what we did is we set up, we can consider this as pseudocode, where we said, if we had a machine that computed accept for us, that computed this acceptance function or this acceptance language for us, we could define this new function M prime. So if I had this a function for accept, I could define some new function for M prime, where what M prime did is it took as input some string, which we're going to say is maybe the description of a Turing machine. So this is maybe the description of some Turing machine. And all that this function did was it invoked except on that string with itself. So where both the Turing machine description and the input to that Turing machine are the same string and returned the opposite of that. So if we had an implementation for accept, what this function m prime was going to do was it, it was going to say to accept, so what is m going to do on, its, on the description of m? So we ask this of accept, and then return the opposite answer, whatever that might be. So whatever accept says, we return the opposite. So what this means is if we had this description for accept, what we would do is we would say, let's ask this question of what happens if we invoke M prime on itself, on its own source, on its own description. So we have this function M prime. I'm now going to invoke M prime on its own description. So let's see what happens. So let's consider what happens if M prime on M prime accepts. Since we defined m prime to do the opposite of accept, so whatever accept did, m prime would return the opposite. So that means that if accept m prime m prime ends up being true, so if m prime does accept m prime, then accept is going to return true, which means m prime is going to return false. So if m prime accepts m prime, then that implies that except m prime comma m prime equals true, which we then said implies by our definition of m prime that uh, m prime on m prime equals false, because we do the opposite. So that's a contradiction. We said if m prime accepts m prime, then in that case, except m prime, m prime is going to return true. Since m prime returns the opposite of that, it's going to return false, which is a contradiction. That means that m prime did not actually accept m prime. So now we have to consider the opposite case. So if, on the other hand, m prime on m prime uh, rejects, then that's going to imply that except m prime on m prime equals false, which in that case is going to imply that m prime on m prime equals true, which means that it should accept. So we have a contradiction. Either way, this tries to answer, we end up with a contradiction. So the only thing that broke here, the only thing that could have gone wrong with our assumptions was that we had this 
function except, that we could have written this function except. So if I could write a Python program for except, then it's totally reasonable for me to define this new Python program m prime, which just invokes except and returns the opposite. However, we knew that this Python program m prime could not exist because then the universe doesn't make sense. So it must have been that except couldn't exist. The only uh, use case we're looking at right now, or the only model of computation we're looking at right now, is one, is one where probabilities don't really exist. This theorem is useful in the sense that we know now, so now that we have this proof, we know that uh, asking this question of does this Python program accept this input, in the general case, just can't really work. It can never work. However, this is useless in the sense that for probably every single Python program you've ever written, you've been able to determine whether or not it's going to halt for some input. So there is this disconnect here where we have this really, really potent proof where we said you cannot compute this function, but then you have your personal experience that says, uh, when can't I? Um, it seems like I can. And basically the reason is because this is only applying for the absolute most general case. So only in the absolute most general case is this an impossible function to implement. If you make some sort of, some assumptions about what your program or what your Turing machine looks like, you might be able to solve this and you might be able to solve it probabilistically as well. But that's a different problem entirely. So for instance, if, I, if you look at a Python program that does not have any while loops or recursion in it, then you know that that's always going to halt, just without knowing anything else. If it's got no loops at all in it, let's just even do that simple one. If it's got no loops at all, it's going to halt. So for those, you can definitely solve this problem. But this just says that no matter how hard you try to solve this acceptance problem, somebody could always come up with a sufficiently convoluted example function where you're not going to be able to get the right answer for your implementation. Programming language researchers do this sort of thing all the time where they want to determine whether or not your program has a certain property. We're going to see by Rice's theorem, that's not something that we're really going to ever be able to solve, but they solve it all the time. Basically, that's because most programs that humans write are going to be well-behaved enough that you can. All that this is saying when we say that this is not a computable problem is that you can't solve it in general, so you shouldn't try. Instead, you should try to solve a particular, more isolated uh, version of that same problem instead. That answer required five minutes longer than you were probably expecting, but it's an important point, so thanks for asking.